Let's transition now to talk about treatments for headaches. I'll start off with some lifestyle changes and complementary alternative medicine treatments, and then we'll finish in the last chapter and talking about specific medications. The first part of treating headaches in children is identifying triggers and avoiding them. Some common triggers for headaches are things like foods. The common ones are chocolate, caffeine, and MSG. MSG can be a little bit sneaky. It's not just in um, Asian foods or bouillon cubes. Also things like flavored potato chips, even some canned soups will have MSG. Hormonal changes can be a trigger for young, young ladies. We might even give these uh, headaches that occur at a certain time in a young lady's cycle a name called catamenial uh, headaches. Certain medications, like we talked about earlier, over-the-counter analgesics like Tylenol or Motrin, especially when used more than three times a week, can cause headaches. And um, in a very concerning way, we need to uh, try to avoid rebound headaches by using those medications more than three times a week. Physical or emotional stress. Sleep changes. And this is an important one. One thing I'll often talk to families about is sleep or a concept called uh, sleep hygiene that is preparing your body to go to sleep. And every time I see a child, we'll talk about this because occasionally I'll have patients where we fix up their sleep and their headaches go away. Sleep hygiene is a principle of preparing your body to go to sleep, usually three components to it. Quiet, calm activities in a dimly lit room. All three of these components are important as they have to do with different neurotransmitters in the brain that prepare your body to go to sleep. So one thing I'll talk to families about, a good thing to do, is some reading in a dimly lit room. If you're, especially reading that isn't very stimulating. It's calming sort of reading. If a child is going to watch TV before they, they go to bed, important to keep the rest of the lights off. And there's been studies that have a certain number of uh, lumens uh, that are required for sleep hygiene for your body to start releasing mel melatonin. I usually don't get that scientific with families. I'll talk about just having a small nightstand light to read by. And if there's a little bit of eye strain, that isn't necessarily a bad thing as it might make a child more sleepy and, 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 and less stimulated to have less light. There's environmental changes that can cause uh, headaches. Again, these are usually hard to avoid. Uh, changes in weather, families will report having increased headaches. And then sensory things like odors and sounds, noise and light. And again, to emphasize that a lot of these things go along with school. And this is one area where families will often get confused, where at the beginning of the school year, children's headaches are worse. Parents, and usually the fathers, will say, um, I think they're just trying to get out of going to school. That's why they're complaining of their headaches when really a lot of these triggers come on at the beginning of the school year. Changes in sleep habits, new smells, uh, s s sounds, maybe dietary changes, and then obviously the stress that goes along with school can all be headache triggers. In your study guide, I've put together a, a list of uh, triggers, including environmental things and uh, food triggers for you to review. One other thing I've included in your study guide is a headache diary. This is a very important point especially for children in preventing headaches. Experienced migraineurs and people with headaches after many years will know what their triggers are. They've been having their headaches for so many years they figured out, you know, it's, it's this food or it's this weather or it's this amount of exercise and they get a headache. For children, they haven't established yet what all their triggers are. And so by using a headache diary, by documenting the headache, thinking back to maybe what they ate earlier in the day or the night before, what activity they were in, they'll start putting together patterns for what causes their headaches. So an important point of lifestyle changes for preventing headaches is identifying the triggers, avoiding them, and a headache diary is a good way to do that. Some complementary and alternative medicine treatments for headaches. Uh, I'll occasionally refer families to uh, something like acupuncture, especially if there's a musculoskeletal component to their headaches, the tightness in the back of the neck, sometimes even physical therapy. Uh, there's some, some other treatments which are, which are less well studied. Um, for now, the best evidence-based complementary alternative medicine treatments, things like acupuncture and maybe some physical therapy. In the next section, we'll talk a little more about specific indications, when to treat uh, headaches with medications and the medications themselves.